It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the fourth Green Growth and Sustainable Development Forum at the OECD. We gather here today in the wake of a defining moment in our battle against climate change. The historic agreement reached at COP21 on Saturday brought countries together to agree on an ambitious target for limiting the global temperature rise. But if we are to secure a more prosperous and sustainable planet, both for our children and our grandchildren and their children, the hard work starts now. Going forward, it will not do to limit the focus on green innovation to the green sector alone. Rather, when we talk about green innovation, we need to make sure that we're talking about making all innovations green. And to do that, to make all innovations green, we need to make a systematic approach to policy to ensure that green considerations are incorporated into our innovation policy settings at the outset and that these are mainstreamed in every policy decision that we take. For policymakers, this implies a much more horizontal policy approach. When you're talking about innovation, it must be, therefore, one that mobilizes technology, mobilizes market mechanisms, takes into account regulations, or ideally helps to improve regulations and have more conducive regulations, and also the social innovations that will enable the transition to a low-carbon, resilient economy. One can think of the atmospheric uh, and ocean and earth climate system as like a bathtub. We have an emissions tap that is running, pouring carbon and other uh, greenhouse gases in, into the system. And then there's removals from uh, forests and, uh, and uh, uh, soils and, and the ocean and forests. Uh, and we know that these emissions have been rising quite steadily uh, due to economic growth, to economic development, carbon intensity increasing, and also population growth. And we also know that these net removals have been decreasing. As the oceans saturate with carbon, they can absorb less. Uh, and uh, with deforestation and, and as the planet warms, the soil also releases uh, more gases. Now, where we end up in terms of peak warming is, in essence, a function of how full this bathtub gets before we stop. And it doesn't matter whether they're going to one degree, two degree, or three degree. In order for the warming to stop, the bathtub has to stop filling. So we have a set of choices ahead of us coming out of Paris. We can either do what the math tells us we need to do, and drive new energy investments to zero starting right about now, and we can stop looking for more fossil fuels. Or we're going to build up some big problems for later, and the, and the choices are not good later. Uh, we'll either be faced with writing off a big part of our energy sector and replacing it later with zero carbon things, but writing them off before they're at the end of their economically useful life. So if you're investing in a new coal plant today, you're, gonna, you're not going to get your money back. You're going to have to write that off at some uh, future point in time. And so as investors, we have to ask, does this make sense? Or we're going to have to take a really big bet on carbon capture and storage uh, that we can uh, later on sort of clean up the mess and, and uh, uh, start absorbing uh, carbon out of, the, uh, out of emissions and out of the atmosphere. And as the Secretary General noted, uh, while those technologies uh, are promising, uh, they're still at an early stage, expensive, and have a lot of risk. Or we blow through the two-degree threshold. Those are our choices. This green growth strategy was established in 2011. The OECD has continued efforts to mainstream its agenda through this forum and sectoral country reviews on environment and economy. And some of this document has been already uh, showed to, shown to you by the Secretary General. And uh, while uh, progress has been some uneven in certain sectors, but uh, this year's tracking uh, progress report indicated that green growth has been successfully integrated into economic agenda, and this is very meaningful exercise. So 
Uh, I'd like to uh, express my uh, sincere gratitude to the Secretariat for their achievement uh, they, they made so far. Mm, regarding the uh, recent uh, progress on technology and innovation, I'd like to introduce to you the Daejeon STI Ministerial Meeting, which took place in 11 years, actually. There was a ministerial meeting in 2004, but this is 11 years uh, ministerial meeting on STI. Uh, uh, STI. And the theme was uh, creating our common future through science, technology, and innovation. Uh, with broader participation of non-members, including uh, ASEAN countries, it was a valuable opportunity to expand the outreach of the OECD on this issue. Um, in the meeting, the uh, ministers adopted the Daejeon uh, declarations. Uh, it emphasized the importance of implementing well-defined national innovation strategy, strengthening uh, impact assessment of public investment, and providing more opportunities for open science and global cooperation, and also uh, maximizing STI's contribution to our better lives, including health. In relation to green growth, the ministers stressed STI's role to cooperate on climate change. Uh, they agreed on the need to strengthen policy framework to maximize its impact on environment using new technologies such as bioeconomy and renewable energy. <music>